overall best presentation here. And um, and so this is uh, uh, to um, and it gives, gives me no um, surprise here, Alfred. Oh. Yeah. Books in the mug, except in this case, you're getting asymmetric planetary in every seven. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to on cosmology, but anyway, there's that. I edited that book. Well, it's his book. Is this signed? Is it signed? Uh, is it signed? Yeah. Uh, here you have something which is very special, and uh, it's actually, I don't know if you can tell what it is. It's actually a pen. You dip the end in ink, and you can do beautiful colors. Oh, I haven't used one in a while. When you're writing it, you can, you can actually draw. <laughs> Beautiful waves can be drawn with that, maybe in dark matter. But anyway, <laughs> and the other thing is a brand new, just arrived, Royal Astronomical Society wow. 2023 diary. Uh, it's analogue. Okay. You know, so I think the universe is analogue as well, you know. So anyway, there you are, those are your three prizes. For inviting me and giving me the chance to give this talk. Um, so today I'll tell you a little bit about the um, research I do in my PhD. So 85% uh, of our universe by mass is composed of something called dark matter. The reason astronomers call this dark matter is not because it signals the end of their careers, but because we can't see it, because it's invisible. Um, but if you choose to accept uh, Einstein's theory of general relativity, this means you need to invoke the presence of dark matter to explain certain key astronomical observations, like the rotation curves of galaxies, velocity dispersions, and the phenomenon of gravitational length. Now, historically, dark matter has been divided into certain categories, hot, warm, and cold. But we know from simulations that cold dark matter uh, best reproduces the large-scale structure of the universe. Like you see here, it best reproduces what we see with telescopes. Okay, so what? What, what are cold dark matter actually made of? So you could, you could ask that question, and the answer is we, again, don't know. So one of the candidates are called machos, which are massive objects like black holes. Um, these have been ruled out. Uh, another is called wimps, which are weakly interacting massive particles. Uh, also not detected over decades of searches and uh, billions of dollars spent. So this means that there needs to be some new physics involved. Uh, next slide. So before I tell you uh, a bit more about that, let me talk to you, talk to you about um, gravitational lensing, another prediction of Einstein's theory of relativity. So let's say we're here on Earth, and along your line of sight, there's two intervening galaxies, a blue galaxy here and a much further um, red galaxy further away. Now, Einstein's theory tells you that the light from these galaxies, uh, the light from the red galaxy actually gets bent because of the mass in the blue galaxy. And what you actually see with the telescope is this. So you see the blue galaxy here, and then you see images of this distant red galaxy. So uh, conventional cold dark matter models, they struggle to reproduce uh, the positions and brightnesses of these red images, which they're supposed to be able to do. Now, these are long-standing problems in the field of lensing. But in addition to this, standard cold dark matter also struggles uh, with certain other observations, like over-predicting the mass of galaxies or predicting steeper density profiles. So what do we do about this? Next slide. In my research, I explore a new type of dark matter called wave dark matter. You can see here uh, simulations done by our collaborators for the first time in 2014. Uh, and wave dark matter has been found to resolve the major problems that standard cold dark matter faces. But on top of this, it forms these really beautiful uh, interference patterns because it's made of very light particles which act like waves on large scales. That's why it's called wave dark matter. So, you know, waves, if you've learned in high school, waves undergo interference, constructive, disruptive. So you see these very rich patterns like sand on a beach, like grainy patterns of density fluctuations. So, um, next slide. So in my research, I use a supercomputer to do simulations of uh, what wave dark matter does to lensing observations. So on the, on the left here, I'm showing you density plots of a region of a, of a galaxy, uh, and the color tells you increasing density. Uh, and this panel is for a smooth model, a standard cold dark matter model. Now, the lines here, the contours you see, are regions of high magnification. That means this is where you expect 
lens images to form if you look through a telescope. So you can see here it looks all calm and normal for the smooth model, but in the wave dark matter, a lot of crazy things are going on. It becomes very chaotic. Um, there's a lot of wavy patterns like wave dark matter, uh, and then you can see all these perturbations that happen. So what? You know, what happens to lens images because of this? So here I'm showing you the lens images as the arcs here. I don't know if it's easy to see. And these arcs for a smooth model, and then these are for the wave dark matter model. And what we find, my, what my research finds is that wave dark matter, the density fluctuations, they can cause significant perturbations to the positions and shapes of, the, of these lens images. And then I compared it with data, and we find that the wave dark matter model is much better at uh, reproducing observations uh, compared to standard dark matter models. So this is something um, like a paradigm shifting research because a lot of researchers, they very they hold the standard cold dark matter very close to their hearts like a holy grail. And they're very, you know, they, they don't like to let it go. So we are hoping, we've submitted our work to Nature Astronomy and we've gotten very positive reviews. So we're hoping this starts the era uh, of considering alternative models for wave dark matter. Um, and for the judges, if you guys are interested, uh, we have extra money in our research grant, so maybe we can work out a deal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, that's the end of my talk. Thank you.